the whole uh, prehistory thing is, is just such an incredible lesson. As you know, Marshall Solins pointed out, the original affluent society, that is such a profound piece of writing and very witty too, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, he compares the modern businessman and the Paleolithic guy, then he says, well, the Paleolithic guy loses on every count. He's just a big loser. Productivity output, he, he, doesn't, even, he doesn't even show up. But then he says, as you probably know, he says, well, if your needs are met, <laughs> then you're the one who's affluent, not the businessman whose needs are never met. He's always wanting more stuff. That's, you know, in 25 words or less, that's got the whole thing, you know, in my opinion. And that sort of thing was, uh, we were finding that as part of the meaning of uh, Green Anarchy. I was thinking about this, uh, the origin of, of terms, for example. I mean, it was more, uh, Green Anarchy was the more general thing that uh, some of us were into, and that's the name of the magazine, too, from 2000 to 2008, which is quite important, I think. Didn't hear the word primitivist very much. I was thinking about this uh, in my own experience. I was driving around in the Bay Area with a friend of mine in California back in the 90s, I don't remember what year, and he told me this term, futur primitif, the French, future primitive, and man, I immediately stole that. It just seemed so apt a term, future primitive. And, and then that started to be a little more current, you know, and now it's just primitivist, uh, of course, it, it means anarchist uh, primitives, but, uh, and the simple idea is, if the future isn't somehow primitive, there ain't gonna be a future, period. And now you'd think that's even more obvious, that that, that point, you know, is, is clearer, but it just, to me, seemed like, wow. And then the rescue of that term, or the valorization of that term, primitive, what is primitive, you know, that's been a whole, thing and to me discovering the anthropology of it you know in the 80s just by accident it's such a wellspring you know such a dominant thing seeing the indigenous dimension not only in the paleolithic sense but in the in the current sense you know native people and also in terms of the genesis of this stuff in the uk there was a publication called green anarchist before green anarchy and not everybody was aware of it some people i know and uh, were well aware of these people in England, and they were persecuted. Some of them were sent to prison. That was a certain link. In other words, that sort of started up before it started here, really. Although I think it would have started here anyway. Here, meaning the West, you know, or, the, or U.S., North America, starting around the time of the Unabomber case, actually. And that's an interesting kind of collision, too, I guess. But these things came to be what we now uh, have as an orientation in anarcho primitivism that it's got to be primitive, and where do you find uh, the story of that? Well, 99% of our time as a species, Homo erectus, Homo habilis, way before Homo sapiens even, so it's all there. People didn't kill each other, they didn't destroy the environment, they didn't overpopulate the hell out of everything. I mean, go down the list of every problem. Didn't exist for the longest time. Organized violence? Nope. It just sounds like anarchist utopia. You write it down and think of what you want. And I used to bring this out, and I remember people being very skeptical. I remember this one kid at school in Portland. He came back down for something or another, and he stopped me. He said, you know, I'm taking anthropology. And the instructor said exactly what you said. Yeah, it's just orthodox anthropology, archaeology now, as as you and Jamie and others know. I mean, it's, it ain't some esoteric cooked up by uh, uh, anarchist characters. Of course, we're taking it further in a sense, you know, in terms of the future, but but not the real goods. And that's one of the odd things today, if I, if you don't mind me rambling on a little more. The, the book, uh, The Dawn of Everything, by the Davids, <laughs> Jamie is hot on the trail of that. We, 
I've reviewed it uh, too, but he's doing the real job. Now it's the left comes around to rescue civilization. Hmm, wow, how did that happen? Well, for one thing, they've never been anything but pro-civilization, pro-domestication, pro-industrialization, uh, the whole nine yards. So why, why be surprised? Look at Noam Chomsky, he's the biggest champion. You know, we gotta have more factories. <laughs> but if factories are the problem, look, look what it's brought. And look, it's just a suicidal path. I mean, can't you see that? I mean, anyway, that's, so it's just kind of naturally, I think, you know, become a somewhat coherent uh, outlook. It's often the case that one thing does lead to another. Maybe the small steps can uh, be energizing and show that, hey, it's pretty cool. We don't have to stare at the screen all of our waking life, you know. Uh, you know, maybe it's more enjoyable to actually put the damn thing down and connect, you know, literally. So, I mean, you know, I think we have to kind of count on that because it, it could be that that's not true. I mean, we hold on to our humanness by some sense of community uh, to strive for at least. and. But everything militates against it, we, as we know. I mean, it's uh, everything is at a further remove. You know, we've mentioned these small things like the anti-tech, the anti-social media gestures, or people getting together. Uh, they're not just getting together to be against social media. They're getting together because getting together is the point. And how we, you know, try to enlarge that is. Uh, You know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, that's what it's all about, but it's easier said than done, of course.